We are recording. Welcome to another episode of Amicably. Uh, I'm Connor Hafton. As always, I'm joined by my co-host, Declan McCrory. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. Today is another top ten list. What are we talking about today, Deck? Uh, we've actually changed the theme a little bit here. Somewhat. It's a bit, somewhat. A bit different for us. Yeah, uh, veering away. Veering away. So we've done books that we read, but more sort of teenage. Is yeah, there? so like, yeah, early, yeah, pre-teen to... Pre- it's basically when you started yeah. reading. When you, when you could read. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Actual oh. novels. <laughs> uh, so Connor's going to start with his top ten first. Yeah, and then we're going to move on to yours for the next episode. It's like what we did with the films. So... We just get it, get into it. For it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So you're number one. These are no order. I'm no order. No. We're not good at that, really, are we? No, I, I couldn't decide. So fair, right? I'm you're just gonna start forward. straight off with the Indian in the cupboard by Lynn Reed Banks. I have read it. I've read, read it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's an amazing book. It's an it. odd like. What's what I'm looking for? It's an odd. I don't know if it was was it written as an American author. No, she's definitely it? British. Is she? Yeah. Because I I had the audio book where she was reading it and she had a. Like completely English. It was actually her reading, wasn't oh, it? Oh. There. Obviously, if it wasn't her reading, that wouldn't be conclusive at all. No, that, that would someone just be read it. Someone, uh, someone English read it. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> so yeah, you you know the plot, obviously. Yeah. yeah so well. for anyone who doesn't know, anyone listening, basically about a, a magical cupboard that a boy guess. Well, knows the key that's magical, but essentially it brings toys to life, and the, and inside these toys is encased an entire history around a person who actually existed in the past. And, you know, it's the whole thing of, oh, that sounds fun, but no, there, there are genuine issues with this. And the yeah. Book, and, like, it deconstructs the entire, like, kid's fantasy. Like, oh, yeah, yeah I've got, like, um, cowboys and Indians. I can make them fight. It's like, no, they're actual people. And, yeah. And they really, and, like, they make a big deal out all the way through. And it's never, like, shoved down your throat, which it's is like a good thing. It's, like, the mirror image of uh, stuff like uh, Nightmare of the Museum, or what do you call it? Oh, yeah. Night of the Museum. Night, Night of the yeah, Museum, sorry. Uh, in the same way, that's, like, things coming to life, and that's the sort of fantasy, whereas this book goes, no, you know what? Like, the real world implications. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, gritty or something. Yeah, I would actually say, and when the books go on as well, because when you think about it, one of the main characters is responsible for, like, 40 scalps, I think they say. Oh, really? Yeah. It's, well, it's, it's, you know, it's the... Scalps is like, I'll never be measured in scalps. I'll be a cool... Oh, I know. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like, he's a mad guy, he's 20 I'd love, scalps. Oh, I'd love good. to, like, it, just a general metric, like someone reversing the car. Oh, you got a few scalps left. <laughs> That's Fair. where I want to happen. Fair. How much effort? Like, four scalps. Mm. Like, a couple of kids, though. I was like, not too bad. No. <laughs> Uh, why, why is it on your list? When did you read it, actually? Which is, which oh, when did I read it? I think I've read it basically at, at different points all my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I would have been like eight, I suppose, first. Yeah, fair. Or, well, I, yeah, no, eight is fair. And then like carried on being obsessed until like 15. Still You're technically out. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. entire series, yeah, because there's four of them. Oh, is and it? And they're all really good. The world building is sublimely good. Um, there's no film or a TV show. Or there is a film. Is there's there? a film, yeah. What's it like? It's it's all right, but it leaves out some crucial Always, bit. always book depictions like this. It's just like, and it's fun. it's technically good for a film, but not as an adaptation. Ah, because okay. some of the bits you think like there's a bit that happens in the book, and you're like, oh, like, I mean, I'd love to see that on film, and they don't just bother. Yeah. yeah. Is it just the first book, or is it it's the entire series? Could oh, be is it? This. So, so it's like Alice in Wonderland, they've lifted. They've, yeah, like yeah. they've got um, they've mentioned like, because the Indian events, they get a wife in the book, mm-hmm. and in this they mention her, but obviously in the first book she hadn't been a factor yet. Right. So stuff like, oh no, maybe she was, but they they sort of reverse it by not giving him the wife in the book because she might already be married in her history. Right. So that, that's okay. what that's one thing the film changes. Fair, fair. Um, yeah. Do you have any other thoughts on this? Work. There are a few things I don't think quite work. So if this wouldn't be my number one, even if this was in order, just oh, really? because like yeah, like a few bits do. Do you have a number one? Probably not, but it, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be this. Eh? Wouldn't be, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because like there's one bit where he's in art class and the cowboy there's there's a cowboy in eventually as well, and he's like, Oh, I loved art. So he draws like what is obviously a massive landscape paint, uh, portrait to him, but is tiny to a human because he's the size yeah, of time. Yeah. And the teacher sees it and she's like shocked by a like it's like, you know, tiny, tiny, tiny. Yeah, yeah, She's yeah. got a magnifying glass. And she's like, oh, my God, this is so small. But, like, she never, 
like they, he never gives an explanation about we can no do it. So that, yeah, yeah, he's not like well, he doesn't come up with a lie to say why it's possible or anything. So it's like that scene does not need to be there. Ah, uh, okay, okay. But other than that, there's like this really cool bit where it's a good example of not everything is ideal about bringing small people to life and essentially playing God. He goes to steal a bow and arrow from an old Indian chief. And when the Indian chief sees him, it dies of fright. So that toy is now a dead person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks dead when he looks at it. And they're very insistent that these are human beings. Yeah. But so yeah. well, the main character is his, his friend, isn't His friend's a good idiot. Yeah. Patrick. Don't get any started on Patrick. Really. <laughs> Fair. Uh, when did this? When was this written? Oh, it's a while ago. Because she's pushing like ninety now. Yeah. Is she alive? Is she? Yeah, she's alive. Well, she read. Well, yeah. She's, she she read those a while ago. She could have recorded that. I was gonna say yeah, that's, that's not after a seventh. But yeah. Um, would you recommend? I assume it's. Oh, I'd, I'd recommend these to everyone, even if you're not like of the ten, whatever age I was when I started. Still reading now. It's really sublimely well written. Characters are fleshed out. Boone is I read it just for him alone, the cowboy, because he's he's hysterical. Can you remember him? Ish, yeah. ish, but he's, he's uh, crying all the time. Some of this is quite vague, yeah. yeah. Um, I didn't really realize it was like a big series. I don't think. I don't know if we did. I it don't think it is a big series. Or something. I don't know. I don't know. I can think. But... No, I didn't do it in school, but like, no, nah, amazing series. Fair. I'll probably reread it. Fair. Bit of a bizarre, like I'll reread. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like a night. in a night. Oh, no, nah, it's not that short, actually. No, it's, it's not, not that short. There are some of these that you actually probably could read in a couple of this. Probably is, probably yeah. is, yeah. Um, Straight on to number two, then. Number yeah. two, bit more generic, bit more standard. Uh, I've gone with Treasure Island. Oh, okay, so yeah, yeah. I, I love... Favourite book, favourite film here, like, yeah. Well, yeah. favourite Disney film. Yeah, one of them, one of them. So basically, for anyone, I think everyone does know... But for anyone who doesn't, the story is about Jim Hawkins discovers a map from a, a former pirate. And he, he goes on an expedition to find it with some slightly w- more well-off people. And then, of course, he gets lured in by the charismatic Long John Silver, who's like, well, he's the bad guy, but that's, everyone just knows that. Now. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, that's one thing, like, it's not even the book's fault. But, like, I, I can't get back to the point where, you know, when this book was first written, that there's that scene where he finds out he's a bad guy, and he's like, oh, my God. But now that's the most well known. It'd be thing like if it. I wrote a book with Blackbeard as like an evil. Like, yeah. We all know where this is going. Yeah, yeah. and now everyone knows the long, already knows the Long John Silver. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, when did you read this? Ooh. I actually couldn't tell you how difficult this book is. I've never really read it. I know the story, obviously, but a lot less than most classics. A lot less hard it? to read than most classics. Fair. Doesn't doesn't ramble on like hardly at all, which no. is really good. It's, Fairly to the point, anything anything there is rambly is essentially important for the characters. Yeah. It's not like this, because it's like, it's not purple prose, as they say, when you're like, when it's purple all, prose. Like, in, oh, like yeah. Victor Hugo and Victor Hugo. Hour, and it goes on for like, or yeah, yeah. J.R. Yeah, or Token Zillow. Yeah, yeah. Like, this, four pages to describe a hill. Like, this, yeah. yeah, there's nothing like that. And when there is something that's a bit like that, you can, you can justify it as. Well, world building, I suppose. Yeah. And and the impact on pirate culture is like massive. Yeah. For that you don't realise how like pi- it's a so pirates are now associated with having pirates on this show. I, yeah, I think it's that. this book and one guy's depiction of the film of this book. I think it's this I mean if it's not this book, it's a very similar anyone, but he right. took a lot of inspiration. And then he was like, oh, I need to put a voice on. And he just went, arr, arr. And that's become no, yeah. no evidence of that. No, like, no. That's all that accent. Yeah. I know. Because, they, yeah, why are they from the West Country? There's yeah, no, yeah exactly. they could have been from anywhere. All the, like, shiver me timbers and all shiver that. Shiver me timbers. From this book and that film. Yeah. Like, it's all just brought together. And so, again, really good characters. It's just it's, iconic, isn't it? It's iconic. Really, it's one of the... Long John Silver is one of the best villains in anything, because you never quite know whose side he's on. Yeah. His enemies don't even really dislike him that much no, most of the time. No. And to write the character like that, I think... I don't want to say there'll never be another one because there probably already are millions. But yeah, yeah, but he's, he's definitely one of attachment. Yeah, yeah, because there's there's not many uh, like many villains that you know combine such conflicting principles. Ah, okay, yeah. Because well, as we've said in every single podcast, pretty much evil for the sake of evil. Yeah, it's we don't worst. we don't like generic it's just villains. Lazy, like yeah, you're not getting those. Son on task. Yeah, it's just awful. Yeah, that's that's true. Unless it's in a kids' film. 
weird and the rest of it is quite light, then we're like, oh, that's, I mean, that's brave then. Yeah. But yeah. if it's in an adult film or a thriller or something and the character is just, I'm evil, her, like, oh no, this is me out there. When they're introduced as like the evil character. The evil guy. There's no yeah. actual reason for no. it. Yeah. Obviously, within reason, I mean, uh, the first Star Wars film. Then obviously the entire next five films was depicting that he's not really just evil. Mm, yeah, no, that's true. But you know, as in uh, any character, I thought Voldemort's a bit like that. In Harry Potter, I thought. Yeah, yeah, that's that's not on my list. I no, is it not? I avoided it uh, for a good reason. I don't really like it. How much is the reason? Yeah, yeah, it was fine, and maybe you know, I think it's too obvious anyway. Like people are expecting it, so it's a bit more fun to flush out a wee bit. Yeah, there. exactly. Yeah. Let's see, what else could I say about Treasure Island? So, yeah, the plot is, is simple, but so effectively done. How similar yeah. is Treasure Planet to Treasure Island? It's more than, more than other Disney films that have called themselves straight adaptations. Well, they're adaptations yeah. sometimes. This basically is just the name. Yeah, especially the princess like, films, like yeah. princess films. Yeah, uh, Anishbach is just. just we say we both like that, though. Do we yeah, care? we don't yeah. mind it. We don't mind it, but it is yeah, pretty similar. Fair. Long John Silver is more is is less of a villain in Treasure Planet. Oh, uh, okay. But Sorry. still, compared to some other adaptations, he's still he's closer. Fair, fair. Uh, any any other thoughts? Any other? When did you read this? Oh, to give some biography. The, 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 you five and then did again. Did you study like, it or something? Did you or no? I think I just someone bought me the audiobook. Ah, uh, fair. You love your audiobooks. I, I bloody like most of these. I've only listened to, but it still <laughs> it still counts as uh, you know right. the story. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> it still counts. Fair. It's fair. It's fair. Yeah. Um. But yeah. Any other thoughts? Or we'll, we'll I smash could talk about it forever, though. To be fair. This is so. the thing. We're gonna smash through these quite quickly. I yeah. Think. So um, I'll, uh, Treasure Island, Robert Louis Stevenson. There, check it out if you haven't already. Oh, do or you know your author Oh, oh. You do, you've done Dave, you don't do like I do. Oh, Lynn least. Reed Banks was the Indian in the cabin. A lot of them I probably do, but there's a few I'll be like, uh, uh, I think I know them. They'll be fine. They'll be fine. Okay. Uh, number three. Number three. Now this is one that's quite purple, right in wise, but. The rest of it makes up for it for me, and that is Oliver Twist. I really love. Never, Oliver I mean, Twist. I've seen the film, I've seen a musical of it, like not an actual musical, but as in a like school version of it or something like that. But I've never read the book actually. Yeah. So there's probably a few plots that you don't know about because they don't get mentioned because they don't in the film. Yeah. Adapt it, yeah. So basically, for anyone who doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, uh, yeah, one of the most iconic film lines of all time. Please, who I want yeah. I, some people only know that are about the other. That so it's what? basically um, after after he asks for more food in his workhouse, he's um, he's apprenticed to an undertaker, and he eventually ends up fleeing to London and joining a band of thieves. But his his happier past comes back in ways that we couldn't have predicted yeah. earlier on in the story. I'll keep it that I'll keep it that vague because. Otherwise, it is kind of just talking about the plot, which I don't want to do too much. No, no. Even though the plot is like the plot is actually really nice. The main, it's, it's a yeah. really good story. Because I remember it being a bit, oh, and then I rewatched it recently, and I was like, actually, yeah, this yeah, is it's like a, a nice solid story. plot. Yeah. But the thing is, as well, like, because I'm assuming like the news goes when you're like, oh, yeah. yeah. There's a few things that they like they don't mention, which are really, really worth putting in the film. Like, Fair. it's basically the book, and you'll, it'll sound stupid when you look at the musical. It's a crime thriller. It it is yeah yeah like okay, it yeah. just it's like I think it's one of the uh, spot on examples of it like if if someone said name a thrill and I'll be like yeah Oliver Twist straight away right okay okay whereas obviously the musical is a lot more sort of like a boy lost just trying to find his way home you or... you do get a lot of that yeah. in the book as well but there's there's a subplot that gets left out of the musical do you know about Monks the character which one's he he's his half brother it turns out to be oh okay not really no so a bit well I'll, I'll spoil it then because. It's a thousand-year-old book. If I was you gonna say, yeah, you yeah, don't read it, don't to it. Yeah. yeah, so basically, Monks is um, he's a lot older than him, and he's been tracking him down for years because they've got the same father, and he found out that the the other son of his father, if he was ever involved in a crime, he'd inherit all the father's money. So there's a subplot right, about like okay. he catches up with Fagin, who's the uh the the ringleader of the band yeah. of thieves, and he gets taken in by him, like you know. Make sure you get him in the shit soon. Yeah, I'll yeah. give you money because I'm gonna. Get ah, him. okay, okay. Well, and... it sort of happens by accident in the film. Uh, oh no, it it happens by accident anyway. But oh, because it? Monk is chasing after him, it adds some yeah. sort of pressure to it. Ah, okay, okay. So yeah, that's that's one thing, and I always think you know you think that'd be worth putting in a film. 
it is in some of the other versions, to be fair. In some of the ones, like, the done more simplify the story as much. Yeah. And there's obviously... Now, this one is a good one for viewing off generic villains. Fagin. Like, you don't even think of him as a villain for a while. No. Because he's, he's meant to be this, this comical old man, but he's... He's still getting kids to steal. He still beats them if they do something. Yeah, wrong. exactly. And he's like, he's a fairly complicated. He's, he's introduced as like a father figure. Yeah, for a lot of these kids. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And there's Nancy, who's a prostitute in orbit name, but one of the heroes. I think she's the you know there's the hooker with a heart of gold trope. Like, have Fair. you heard of that? I've I never think... heard that exact phrase, but I know exactly. Or the tart, trope. tart with a heart. Is that might be more. Yeah. Fair. But, like I think. She's. I can't think of an earlier example than that, and and it's one of the most fleshed out examples as well. And there's, I mean, Bill Sykes is a generic villain, to be honest. In he's a very, movies. especially like Victorian sort of novels and stuff. Yeah, that sort of isn't it? Yeah. Until the end of his arc, then he starts getting a bit more complicated. Fair. Okay. Yeah. And they're a little bit bad characters, though. They're quite well. They're all really good. Like Artful Dodger is the one everyone remembers, but he's just a drop in the ocean for yeah, fleshed yeah. out characters in this book. They. And again, they they all they all serve their purpose. They've all uh, some, your favorite things. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, I I say I always say that's good because you don't see it a lot. But I've named so many things you do see it, and you obviously do see it a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I yeah I get this is another one I could talk about forever. So I'll just keep it keep it simple. So keep that was simple. Oliver Twist by Charles Dickens. Oh, when'd you read it as well? Oh, nine. And nine? Then, and again, recurring. I was going to say yeah. There's a few like, on my list oh, that my mother probably read. There's a few on my list that I read as like and like whatever preteen or whatever, and I yeah. probably only understood it later on. Le- yeah, this is one like there's this. a couple of books I've read that I was like I was a bit of a pretentious as a kid. Not pretend, but I wanted to I wanted to read classics, and I was like oh I'm gonna read these, and then like you know I don't know if anyone who picks up Ulysses gets a new. I didn't pick up Ulysses much. Oh god. Do you know what I mean? I think a lot of it. But anyway, long. Uh yeah, so you're number four. Look. Number four. Holes by Louis Saka. This actually is not, I didn't really have that much fondness for this book. I a lot, as in, I never really, uh, I didn't dislike it or anything, but I remember like being a kid and having a lot of friends who were like, this is the book, this is my favourite book. It is the book, yeah. It was this, on, uh, I don't know if it'll be on, it's not my list actually, uh, Curious Incident. I've never read that. I mean, not, but it was no. those two, like I noticed a lot. So, uh, yeah, so fill me in on Holes. So, have you seen the film <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I've seen the film a long time ago. A long time yeah. ago. It's basically, it's quite similar. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, um, so the story is Stanley Elnitz is accidentally sent to um, a juvenile facility because of a miscarriage of justice in Green Lake, Texas, yeah. where the, the the juveniles are made to dig holes every work day. Work camp, basically. Yeah, yeah, a work camp. And then there's more. There's so much more to it. It's like you find out it's a treasure hunt story. There's a lot of his personal history that ties in amazingly well. It's very character. With the present. I'm assuming. It's very character. There's there's elements of re- magic realism which are done really like exceptionally. Yeah, like uh, a stream that runs uphill. Like, oh really? A family curse that's important. Right. Okay. Because do you know the story about his like his rotten pig stealing great great grandfather? But I'll fill you in on that. Fair, it's not yeah. like it's a pretty. Again, old this book. is one of these ones that like. If Most you ask people me, know it, do you know yeah. it? I'll be like, yeah, and then I sort of, when I actually look back, I'm like, I don't know how much I remember, um, you know, so, yeah. So, so the like, story, like, this is just a subplot within the who thing, yeah. yeah, but it's still important to what happens in the present day. So basically, is pig stealing great-great-grandfather, who's from, like, I don't know, I think he's Latvian or something. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, he wants to marry this girl, and he's like, oh, I've got nothing to impress her with. So he goes to, like, this old fortune-telling woman who he's friends with, and she's like, well, if you take my, the youngest of my pigs, and you make, you carry her up the hill every day to drink the water from the stream and sing to it, then eventually be carrying a full-grown pig, and you'll be really strong, and she'll fancy you because of that. Right. And so he gets really strong. He's like, oh, to the father of the woman he fancies, he's like, I want to marry your daughter. Then he realizes the daughter is really stupid and is like, this shit's not worth it. <laughs> so he leaves for America, he learns how to speak English, but he forgets his promise to the old fortune telling woman to carry her up the hill because she can't walk anymore because she's getting old. Uh, and it's okay. like one last time she wants to have some sort of like freedom, I guess. So because of that, there's a curse on his family of bad luck for years on right, end, okay. which gets lifted in the end of the novel in a pretty, pretty well executed fair, way. Fair, fair. Uh, where did you read this? 12, I think. Oh, really? the, yeah. the oldest of the bench, I think I was. For oh, this really? 
And again, this has got some sublime world building. This is like a detective novel without a detective. And like, I find another discovery book of fish novel or something. Yeah, a discovery yeah. novel. It's like, it is like a mystery novel and it's not forceful about it. And it's written in a really casual way that fits in perfectly. It's not There's pretty no, old, is it? No, it's a modern one. It's the, definitely the most modern one I've mentioned oh, so yeah, far. A, well, close, close second to it, you know, because that's not old. No, okay. But yeah, and it's there's no floweriness in this. Everything is vital. Fair, fair. Um, so that was Hold by Louis Saka. This is your fifth, is it? Uh, so yeah, it should be my fifth coming up now. We'll flying through these. I know. Ah, uh, okay. Really generic one, but I, I was like, I was going through these and I was like, I can't you miss can't this out. Yeah. yeah, I can't miss this out because I genuinely loved it. Peter Pan. I actually don't have this on my list. You don't? No, I don't think I read it as a kid. I have read it. Ish. Like, I don't think I've ever read the actual book, but I read yeah. sort of like shortened. Oh, the Lady Bird or whatever. Yeah, yeah exactly. I don't well, this ever... one is actually quite purple in parts, but there's also a lot of really good world building that none of the films will show you. Actually, do, yeah. Yeah, and there's there's some really complex morale characterization. Morale. Moral. No morale. I, whereas uh, the films are very. This is the evil person. Yeah. Like, everyone hates Captain Hook. Mm. This is a lot more. Yeah, like. Peter Pan is almost a villain himself. Yeah. Hook's got plenty of good points. They, they say in the narrative, there are lines he won't cross. Right. Peter okay, Pan, yeah. actually, and one thing that's pretty interesting, Neverland doesn't actually halt the aging process. No? No. He, Peter Pan, if a lost boy starts showing signs of aging, he just kills him in the book. Oh, right. I know. Uh, yeah, I've not it. read the same book as you then, no. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't in the Lady Bird. I'm assuming but... what I've read is just like the Disney. You've got to really wonder, haven't you? How they made so many books for kids that were like, books, sorry, films, like, because the Disney one. All is the Brothers much... Grimm. And, yeah, uh, there's well, pretty much very, like. Very, very yeah. brutal, yeah. And like the Disney Peter Pan, that's pretty. There's not a lot in there that's not kid friendly. Yeah. But it's come from a book where the main character kills people when they start aging. Yeah. And there's. A lot of fantasy elements that are really unique to this book that, again, you never see in the films. Like most children, I think, are born part bird, and that's how you can fly. Right. But but it goes after a certain age. And it's like, because there's a thing, two is the beginning and the end in the book. And I think that's tied in with the fact that that's when you sh- stop showing traits of. Right. Okay. But he, he left the real world when he was a baby anyway. Okay, okay. Um... So, be, uh, well. I mean, everyone knows the part where I'm going to recap it anyway. Okay, yeah. So the Darling family get whisked away to Neverland by Peter Pan. Yeah. And they become embroiled in his world. What's and his... his reason for doing it in the book? Looking for his shadow, which he... Oh, and yeah. then he gets caught up with that. So it's, yeah. it's the film, actually. Okay. Yeah, it is. It's, that's not different. Okay. So then they get embroiled in his fantasy world, which has got, like, dark mermaids. It, it really deconstructs a lot of fantasy tropes. That at that time, I don't think would have been worn out yet anyway. Ah, quite so he's, like Hans Christian Andersen yeah, stuff. And all yeah, that, exactly. It? So he was like, J.M. Barry was ahead of the curve in, right. in a lot of things. Which is weird to say now, because everyone thinks he's just the gold standard fantasy writer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just did Peter Pan, but Peter Pan's got some insanely good traits in it. There's, it mixes together so many, like... Uh, it's like in the other cupboard where it's like, oh, that sounds all blissful. There's things that kids generically like, yeah. and they're all given really three dimensional context. Ah, yeah, okay. And they're deconstructed in ways that it's not all ideal, you know, fighting pirates isn't that fun. Be, uh, being young forever isn't that fun because you have to be separated from your family to do right, it. Right, okay, yeah. Stuff like that. And that's a lot of that. Again, the films gloss over, and they are the best things about the book. Fair, okay, yeah. Uh, when did you read this? Oh, probably the youngest of all. But it, like it stayed with like I've gone back to it. Is it a big? Times. Is it a big novel? Is it or is it? It's really long. To be fair. And there is a lot of like I said, it, like there is fatigue at the beginning. Where you're like I'll just get to, get it, to it. Yeah, already. especially when you already know the story. But when yeah, but uh, when you yeah. get there, you're like, oh, you know what? This was worth the wait because this is so good. And yeah, moral complexity is one of the best things about it. Tinkerbell's not entirely good. Peter Pan's definitely not. Yeah. Captain Hook, obviously, he's the villain, but he's he's got. Some redeeming features about him. Smee. Now, Smee is a great character. Whatever film, yeah, whatever yeah. movie you look at, he's just hysterical. And he's he's on top form in this because this is where he started. So, yeah, Peter Pan, Jane Fair. Barry is. That was number five, right? Oh, yeah, so we're halfway through. Halfway through. Okay, number six. I think this will be on yours, but I'll say it anyway because I, I love this. Animal Farm. 
I it was one of my remember I said to you before. Oh, uh, animals. That no, well, like uh, I've left a few. Studying. That I may have studied, you studied and, animal farm. Uh, right. I didn't study it, but it was one of the books that a lot of people, especially in the UK, study. So I sort of left because uh, I had like nineteen eighty four slash animal farm. Oh yeah, oh, I never so read nineteen eighty four. Oh really? I don't. I like. I know it's good, but I don't imagine it'll be better. Oh, oh really? Like, I think fair. yeah, it's like it is great. George yeah, really Orwell has peaked you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. It is really good. Wordworth worth would it is recommended. Plus, the only problem with nineteen eighty four is it's so like every rock band has to use flipping imagery of it, and every film has to use mm. it. Like the whole Big Brothers watching you. Big Brothers watching you. Was, it was it was no the the place. And... War is freedom. Ignorance yeah, is so it's become very. Like fatigued. Oh, even sorry, it's not are... war is freedom. It's a war is peace. Freedom is slavery. Against yeah. Strength. Yeah. 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 Uh, but anyway, so but this is the right book. That's so... not that anyway. Uh... So anyway, back to Animal Farm. So the plot is essentially um, old major. That's the pig's name at the beginning. So, so yeah. He's he's rebe- he's talking about the uprising of man and how animals are mistreated by him. Then he dies, and some of his followers misinterpret his words and take it to more extremist lengths and. It's a gradual descent into villainy and into like who's the real villain in this. Yeah, piece. so deep into their own sort of bull. Into yeah, they become the things they hated, and it's one of the most. It's a really powerful ending. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's one that the two film adaptations have both changed the ending, which is the entire point of. I've the story. only seen one of the adaptations. So that's an like, animated one. The animated one, yeah. Yeah, that did, that just that said more with the entire purpose of what the yeah, stands for. Yeah, that film was essentially changes. like a Disney barnyard film. Like it was really bizarre. Yeah, that's the one I've seen, and it's good until they change the end. So, and there's a there's a really strong sense of character in this, even though they are animals, and it makes you feel bad for the way animals are treated. Even though I won't stop buying ham. Well, no, I will stop buying ham. Ham's only four out of ten, as we established. But I <laughs> I won't stop eating pork and stuff. But I'll I'll listen to this and think, oh my god, like everything they say is right. Animals genuinely are like. There's that big speech at the beginning of Old Major says, like, oh, you'll never see any of your, your babies again to the chickens. And, oh, like, yeah, they yeah. take your eggs and the milk that you toil to create and you get put through pain to create. That's just just gets guzzled yeah, down for them exactly, in yeah. a casual move. And, like, all the all the actions of the farmer, that's just M.O. for a farmer. That's just standard. But to them, that's really villainous. Yeah, and there's yeah. a good divide of that. And it's really it's dramatic. It's amazingly paced. There's one bit that it's I can't... It's only 150 pages or something as well, pages. It's quite short, yeah. yeah. And there's the way they paraphrase the rules that were set by the by old major is really clever. Um, actually, well, we'll talk about the, the parable of it. Afterwards. The parable of yeah. it. Oh, what it stands for. Yeah. 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 And it's, it actually, if you do, if you don't even know what it stands for, it's still a perfect still a example. Good, yeah. That's the perfect example of you don't need any background context to find the story amazing. Yeah. Like, I don't even think it even makes it more interesting, though, in the background no. context. It, it should, and for a lot of people, it probably will. But for me personally... Like, without like, historical context... It's still good. It's still a great book. It's the yeah. opposite of Princess Kaguya, which needs the director's defense yeah. for certain scenes to make any logical You have to read up on the Wikipedia yeah, afterwards. Which yeah, which is pointless, yeah. But this is all a straightforward storytelling. It doesn't treat kids like idiots, because it is essentially a kid's book. In a way, it's even though very it's... Uh, today the animals did this. Yeah. Like it's very straightforward. There's a really it's... strong juxtaposition between how complex the events are and how simple the writing is, and they've got a spot on. Yeah. He's got a spot George on. Orwell. It's one yeah. guy. It's George Orwell. Yeah. Uh, so do you want to go into? We won't talk too much about it because neither of us are historians. No, I'm not that clued up. But it's it's an analogy for the Russian Revolution. Oh, yeah. yeah. Basically, how communism slowly falls into dictatorship. There is like a, a developed thing on which character represents which participant. There's a lot of it, yeah. and then like he's changed it for uh, symbolism and stuff. Yeah, like generally, it's basically how Stalin yeah. forced the you know the uh, the whole basic moral of it is uh, everyone is equal, but some are more equal than others. Yeah, so that's the whole build. That's the, the story, entire yeah. yeah. Some animals are more equal than others. Yeah, yeah. which is the pigs and the pigs. Thing. Yeah, so is Snowball Stalin? I think so. Or is it Napoleon? Oh, I mean, Napoleon. Which... Snowball and Napoleon are like, which I, I think Snowball is the big bad and Napoleon's is right down. Oh, isn't it? Yeah, okay. I think. Again, I, I always mix the two I up. I don't want to say too much because I don't want to uh, insult the historians. No, exactly. But I like, yeah, because I did look at this the other day. And I it is a very clear analogy. analogy. It I is a clear analogy. Like, it is good. Um, it's not like other novels which sort of like have a vague um, 
meaning this and, then they, very clearly and then they and then they cash in on that yeah yeah this, this is, is clearly a reaction from him definitely like, yeah definitely in the same way 1984 is a very clear like dystopia dystopia, dystopia yeah. yeah uh but yeah when did you read this did you study it or did you i didn't i just found the <laughs> audiobook <laughs> in my dad's like drawer right. it was just like oh, i want to picture a pig this this is cool Fair. and i listened to it like to death Still listen to it now occasionally because I got an old book on the app. <laughs> but I I have physically read it as well. Yeah, like yeah. this, you know what? Even if I was doing a list of just you know forget the team thing and just books, this would still be on there. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think of all the th- some of them wouldn't have that I've said now, but this one would be on just any list of books I yeah, found good. Definitely. This would always be up there. It's about it's not my favorite book, but it's not far off. It's a great book. It's yeah, great, it yeah. is fantastic. George Orwell is an absolute genius. He is amazing, but like. I'm only basing that on this. Like I have read a lot of his stuff. He's not even there. Uh, he's a really great essay on um, the life of Dali and how can oh, you Salvador separate Dali, the yeah. art from the artist. Oh, uh, is it Dali? Because it's Dali. It is Dali. Because yeah. I've said that wrong, and now I'm correcting myself. But it's Dali. Yeah. It is. It is Dali. Dali was like a Nazi sympathizer and stuff, and he like beat his wife. Oh, yeah, man. he's a horrendous person, and he and he's weird he's, anyway. And they argue like is he just scum and we can't ever look at his art or can you like can you listen to the music that charles manson made before murdering people or can you listen to wagner music? massive anti-semite yeah, yeah. Like, can you can you uh separate this art and if they never act on it does that make it okay does that you know uh which is actually really interesting for some of the stuff that's come through now we've talked about for modern stuff yeah and all these celebrities and you go we'll bring I, that i'm gonna in... stop watching their films yeah <laughs> like... we'll bring that up when we do the Baby driver review. We'll yeah, a proper oh, debate. Oh, that's sure. gonna be heated. Oh, uh, so I think we should. Yeah, I think we should. To be fair, so oh. that was Animal Farm by George Orwell. It was number whatever it was. I feel like it was six, but I'm not sure. It was. Yeah. It was six. Okay, number seven. This is a series of books, so I'm gonna just talk a bit about all of them. Oh, okay. Uh, a series of unfortunate events is my number seven. I knew you put this on. You knew, fair, yeah. 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 So again, like this wouldn't be. If I was just talking about favourite books ever, this wouldn't make the cut, but I couldn't miss out of the kids to team well. In the same way, was... Harry Potter isn't a yeah. lot of people's favourite, but I don't think yeah. anyone thinks Harry Potter is no, one of the best, one books, best ever, books but it's a good children's It's book. so attached to them, and um, this is like, this to me is what Harry Potter is to most people I know, yeah. basically. Yeah, and I think it's unfair of us to be too attacking. Of Harry Potter. No, sorry, sorry JK. To. I'm only JK in. Oh, shut hey. up. <laughs> um, ha, we'd better start rolling with it. Oh my God. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so Series of Unfortunate Events by Lemony Snicket. The plot is fairly simple. It's three uh, three Baudelaire children, they become orphans. And basically, the books chart their experiences after that point and the gradual worsening, the gradual bizarreness of their situation. All done with a with a great blackly comedic twist. But a little bit of fantasy. But a little, little yeah, there is there not is, too much though. It's not too much. Weird, yeah. It's sort of like time period blending is the best example of fantasy you get. Yeah. And yeah. it's it's a it's an engaging mystery novel. The one annoying thing is a few things don't get explained. Which are so I read these like never sat down and read them. I never sat because how many is there? There. Thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. Um. Thirteen never... chapters in each, except for the last one, which oh, is really? a hidden chapter. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, what do you call it? Yeah, I never sat and read them as a kid, but I read them. Uh, it was funny, like, uh, in primary school, if you finish work, or you could go do some reading and stuff, and they were always the books that were taken out a lot. I mean, yeah. like, I remember noticing that. And, uh, That's where I did too. That's yeah. how I started. All oh, really? Yeah. yeah. So I'm a little patchy with them, a little bit. Um, and obviously, they're a bit of a weird book to read now. I they think. are now, because um, there, there are issues with the plot now and again. But and the, it's not really a book for us. Really, no, the yeah. eclectic style of writing does make up for a lot of the things. I, I actually quite, we've talked about it before as well, we quite like the like sort of how the book was written is actually really quite interesting. Yeah. Like the sort of, usually you find the stuff in, in, in like the sort of writing technique yeah. in more advanced novels. It's quite cool to see it. Like, oh, oh yeah, this is, thing. yeah, this is really well written. Like the, the characters are so fleshed out, especially in the, the narrator. The fact he's a passive character within the story yeah. is like... It's not new, but it's done here so well. It's done here well, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, it's done. Yeah, and like, it. he's got such an engaging backstory that relates to things, and they keep it vague for most of the thing. Because like, do you know who Beatrice is? No. Have you uh, you've seen it at the beginning? He says like four yeah, Beatrice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well. Oh wait, no. You do know. You've who said it to me before. Yeah. But I say okay, that's that's impression. a powerful that's a powerful um, twist right there. That is, yeah, that yeah. is like I was like, oh, that is brilliant when I found that out. Um, also, sadly, the I don't you. I think you 
thought that Netflix series was all right, didn't you? I quite liked, quite liked that. Because that was quite. I don't think people. That was were, divisive. But I don't yeah. think people hated it, but I think people were like disappointed. I think I was vaguely, but I still thought it was pretty. It's closer to what I imagined than the film with Jim Carrey was. Oh God, yeah, I forgot that existed. Yeah. yeah. Even though I really loved that when it came out at first, but there's there's so many things in that they glossed over. They think so worth putting in there. Well, they're but... trying to smash. 13 bucks in the... Yeah. yeah. Or oh, three, three. They did the first three and acted like that. Oh, the did end. they not? Yeah. Did they? Oh, right, okay. Uh, fair. But this, like... This has got... I know 13 bucks is easy to get a strong sense of world building in, but this really does. He creates his own environment where, like, you have to invest... It makes you invest in the absurdities early, so you know that the rules are... Sl- like, it's got a firmly set bunch of rules that don't c- comply to what we used to see in illogical storytelling. Yeah, yeah. But at least he's honest about it from quite early on. And that's that's one thing that a lot of writers, not that I'm a genius, but a lot of writers do get wrong. Because when you read when you read things like there are literally no rules in what's Oh yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Um I mean we like yeah, we talk about this all the time where the main character can or suddenly do happens, everything and the plot yeah. just becomes there's no stakes. There's no so, stakes, yeah. So yeah. it's just like, oh right, uh then I'll just stop reading. Like, yeah, like, yeah. There's, yeah. You don't really get anything like that. It no. is. It's, and there's, there's even, and book seven is called the Vile Village, and this is probably the one I'm closest to. Like, like this might be my favorite one, just because of how much it turns the other books on their head. It changes the genre a bit. They're not confined by the narrative anymore. Cause they're not, they're not being brought up by one eccentric guardian. Yeah, so yeah. it means they can do more stuff. And there's actually a really well foreshadowed Deus Ex Machina. And find that in another book. That may, right, Apart okay. from, it actually happens in the Indiana Cabin series. They've got a well foreshadowed Deus Ex Machina. Jeez, you love it. That's like your, like, well, yeah. your study. That's your day. That's your word of the day. Yeah. <laughs> but like, um, how, how many, like the point of a Deus Ex Machina is usually, it's not well foreshadowed, it comes out of nowhere. Yeah. But they find a way to combine two conflicting so, tropes yeah. really well. Um. Yeah. I mean, you probably, I'm assuming you read this ongoing rather than... Ongoing, yeah. yeah. Like what a lot of people did with Harry Potter, I think. Yeah, yeah. And the way it ends is really satisfying because, like, it doesn't show, it shows that everything's not perfect, but, you know, things are getting better because they can't have a completely happy ending. Yeah. Of these unfortunate events. And it gives, like, I know Kendall left, you'll still think, what, what a tosser, whatever he does. But it does give him a, a good redemption arc, which in any other book you think, oh, it's too late now, but they actually. They make an evil laugh part of his character development. Yeah. Like, do you know about that yeah, scene? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I know that mainly from the um, series rather than... They haven't. Are they pretty sure they the series? Yeah. Oh, they, they, haven't, they haven't got that far yet. This isn't the oh, final is book. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. But, like, I mean, how did I'm they just do reading that? this. So, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. That's, reading that's around the around genius of this guy. This Lemony Snicket character. Fair. Um, yeah, so... Uh, any other thoughts, or is that you? I should probably say what I told you. You found hilarious uh, a while ago. Oh that. god, yeah, 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 yeah. That I That's thought. Not a spoiler. No, it's not. It's not a spoiler, really. I, it's not. Li- it's going to be quite big. But I genuinely thought the Lemony Snicket was a real person for ages, because and that any of his, yeah, the author. It, mm. it's, it's called. It says by Lemony Snicket. Yeah, it's yeah. called by like like the book is called a series of books by, by Lemony by Snicket. Snicket. Yeah. So, like, I was thinking, because there's loads of authorial asides that give glimpses into his own life. Like, yeah, um, yeah. in the fourth book, which is called The Miserable Mill, they go to a lumber mill where there's a sign written in chewing gum. And he's like, that's probably one of the most unwelcoming signs ever, apart from what I saw written in Dead Monkeys. I genuinely thought the actual author had once seen a sign written in Dead Monkeys. Because obviously it's character like development of the overarching of the character. Overarching. Yeah. And, like, if I know I was young at the time, but if it can convince one person... Then that's some it's good, good that's right. some yeah. engrossing writing right there. Um, but yeah, I, this wasn't last year. We should point out. You didn't no, think this was, was no, this was in like year five or something. No, I can't remember what's the author's real name. Daniel Handler. Aye, aye. Uh, and he he likes thought? his food. He talks about food a lot in these books. Yeah. Uh, so and he has really written anything else? Horseradish. Is it is it out of Which is connected to it though. Is it? Oh, he's done a prequel series about Lemony Snicket's early life. I know that like this has been his baby though, hasn't it? It's been yeah. this entire But he has done a prequel series if anyone wants to check it out, call all the wrong questions. And I think that explains a few things that the unfortunate events doesn't <laughs> a few of the things I said I wish they were explained. I Aye. think get mentioned in that. Um yeah, so move on to your yeah, number, eight. My number eight now. So that was a series of unfortunate events by Lemony Snicket. <laughs> I'm going on to 
Well, Dandelion, the technically. Yeah, I was going to say, problem is, yeah. Uh, the Wind in the Willows. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, I love this book. Um, When did you read this? Probably the youngest of the bunch. Really? Because this is a this, weird yeah. one. Because it's Cause got, there's like, so many leading It's kind of not become a classic anymore in a weird... I think it was probably... Mm. I don't know if it was more of a classic years ago. Or maybe I just talked a lot of crap. But I just like... It, it feels like one of these series that uh, is very... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Very well known, but like not a lot of people have actually sat and read them or, you know? Or would you yeah, just, would you just disagree probably... with me there? I don't know. I don't know, actually, because I know, I don't know many people who go, oh, yeah, I love that book, right? I know a lot of people like, oh, I know, it's got animals in it, and they, yeah, they fair, basically know yeah, it. Yeah. So basically, for anyone who doesn't know, it's about um, the events of a few anthropomorphic woodland creatures, but it's so much more complex than it sounds. Most of it is relating to the actions of what did Mr. Toad yeah. and his short-lived obsessions really drive the plot, but there's so much else going on. Every character's got their own arc. There's only four to be fair, but they've still got they well developed. They well developed. They've got their own stories going on in the midst of bigger stories. There's it's it's a good genre bust in one. There's humor. There's in a way there's a drama. There's slice of life moments. There's fantasy. A lot of people uh, who adapt it do away with some of the fantasy elements though. Uh, okay. There's like obviously there's still talking animals, whatever. Yeah, animals, yeah. But there, there's one scene which has got like mythical connotations that you'll never see in the film. Movie, oh right? really? Apart from the one that was done by American people, an, an animated uh, version. Oh, yeah, but yeah. Um, there's quite a lot of adaptations actually. Talking there about. are so many, yeah. and yeah, this is one really good world building again. It's, 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 a it's adventurous. There's no floweriness in this, actually. There's no, no purple writing in this. Any everything is relevant. It's everyone's three three dimensional, like I said. It's quite short as it's well. It's quite short as well, yeah. Uh is it readable? It's not readable, but it really is it. As in Well, like, could, probably, could I sit yeah, down and think would... this is good? Uh, oh yeah, I think so. Oh really? I think um it's one that you can read and go like, oh yeah, this is good, but maybe it's a bit too late for me. I yeah, think that's what you get. Yeah, appreciate it, but not yeah. like actually get not, it. Not as much it. as when I was whatever age I yeah, should yeah. yeah. Um Yeah, this is like not like really I don't know how old it is, to be honest. Nineteenth century. No, Edwardian times because they oh, have cars, it? yeah. They've cars were a new thing and that's part of, that's a massive part of the uh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. thing. Um yeah, any other thoughts on it? Or there's I'm, not really a lot you can say on this, is there? I can talk about it forever, though. It's oh, really? Like, yeah, that you could, like, you could really flash it out, but we're not really doing that. No, we're not, because it, it, otherwise it'd be a Wind in the Willows episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm ready. I'm not going to listen to this. So, Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. <laughs> Kenneth Graham, uh, to give him his full yeah, name. Yeah, fair. <laughs> his title. Uh, Kenneth Graham. That sounds like a freaking pop quiz answer. I'm going to remember now. Who wrote I wouldn't know Kenneth Graham. Kenneth Graham. He oh, yeah. also wrote The Reluctant Dragon, if that's the question. If they say who wrote The Reluctant the Dragon, you like Kenneth Graham. Okay, so my number nine now, we're getting through these. We mentioned this author in passing, in this episode, even. But I've gone for The Hunchback of Notre Dame. Ah, Victor Hugo. yeah, yeah. I've said that. Check it out. No. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. So, well, yeah. To be fair, I think most people are reading the Victor Hugo version. Oh, it's like Disney film three thousand It is really long, but... Okay, so for anyone who doesn't know the full story, it's not in. It's not just about the Hunchback of the book. It's You'll be surprised. It's horrendously complicated. It's book, horrendously yeah. complicated, but it's basically about the lives of Parisians, mainly their involvement with a gypsy girl named Esmeralda. And so, yeah, it is horrendously complicated, like you said. There's a not strong necessarily sense. a bad thing. No, mean, not like, necessarily a bad thing. Yeah, that's uh, horrendously he wrote, complicated. Um, the musical makes that look like nothing. Like it's yeah, really, that's true. really intricate. And oh, really in Lame is there's like page after page after page about the bishop who he sees for five seconds. Who's literally just like, yeah. oh, you stole my stuff. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. That's like that's his entire arc done. Like, that should be that's sh- that's all they need even in the book. Yeah. They they waffle on, but I don't think there are flowery bits in this, but they really serve a purpose. I think in this because they come in later. There's a bit where he talks about Parisian architecture. And you think he's just showing off now. Yeah, yeah. But they are actually, it gets in, it plays into the plot later on. Like, yeah. Someone, someone was on this part of the building when this happened. There's a lot of dark humour in this book that you wouldn't expect. Oh, really? There's like this one bit where it's a character who usually gets left out, but it's the main villain's brother. And like Victor Hugo, but one more actually, you know, the narrator, yeah. goes like, oh, and um, he fell onto a peasant's pillow, which I will refer to as a dung heap. 
<laughs> like stuff like that. Like really, like slightly really surreal odd, yeah. intervals in it. So yeah, the, every character fleshed out. Quasimodo is not just this nice, ooh, I'm nice character. He's got like, you know, he's got loads of antisocial traits. He's gone deaf, so he can't really communicate. He's a he's lot a more proper, disfigured and stuff. He's a lot he's... more disfigured he's in the, than the Disney one. He's a lot more of an outcast. But everything is, you know, attributed to other people's faults. He's got like a troubled past. It's totally justified. Frollo is a lot more of a complicated character than you see in the Disney one. Yeah. He's actually an unambiguously nice person until he gets driven by these thoughts and lust, which as a priest he can't have. Yeah. And he explains them perfectly in this one really good scene in a dungeon, but I can't really ruin too much. The ending is amazingly depressing. Like, it's one of the most, ha, in your face, and I've like that, ever read. Even the films a bit depressing. Yeah, because he doesn't fall in love. Yeah, but this yeah. one is like, it goes a thousand, further, yeah. a thousand leagues further, yeah. Uh, I also know that, like, it's bizarre because Victor Hugo is like an advertisement for Paris. He, like, is yeah. the details he describes. He knows Paris everything about Paris. like, yeah. real, like, this book makes more sense if you can walk around Paris after reading it. Obviously, that's not that's something that most people can do. But as in, like, he describes, French, yeah. Yeah, he describes streets, etc. really, he really does, interesting. He does, he does, yeah. yeah. Uh, similar to, actually, Ulysses is the same. With uh, Dublin. With Dublin. Yeah. Like, they've actually added this thing. I think they've done it in Paris as well for some of Victor Hugo's stuff. Because I know his house has been donated and stuff. Um, in, if you walk around Dublin now, there's uh, pavement slabs that have little chapters from Ulysses. Page, 18, page 108. Like they walked it down the lane or whatever, and then that's like you're in the lane they were at. That's awesome. It's really cool, yeah. But yeah. they've done stuff like that with uh, some of Victor Hugo's stuff. So. Yeah, that's, that's not to that yeah. extent, but they yeah. probably, yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. So, yeah, but the plot is seriously gripping again. It's got elements of a thriller, it's got elements of just straightforward drama. There's Very readable. action. No, I really, really, really should read I actually should read a lot of Victor Hugo stuff now. Yeah. That's like on my list. And it's got such, like, the descriptions of the pivotal scenes are. Like amazing, you don't think he's overdone. You think, no, oh, this this sort of detail is but necessary. He's the, the, the French poet, the French yeah. author, isn't he? And yeah. there's bits where he plays with your mind because there's a bit where he's like describing Esmeralda's legs and there's like the fact that a bit of his legs are showing off her dress while she's being dragged away to her. Yeah, and he's like, ah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I'm subverting expectations. Yeah. And, and again, he's a 19th century writer, so there wasn't that much so expectation. Was it like early 1800s, was it? He was, yeah, the same time as Dickens. Was it? Yeah. It, it, the book is set in medieval times, but... Yeah. So, yeah, I don't want to say too much about that because I don't want to give him way too much plot. But I'm just back in Notre Dame by Victor Hugo. It's there. probably your biggest um, children's book that you've made. Yeah, because I don't even know. Like, you could argue it's not for kids, but I started getting into the story when I was ah, one, fair, so, yeah, yeah. so I couldn't miss it out because It's a kid's book from the aspect that a lot of people would think of it as kids. As yeah, because they'd been a Disney film. Yeah, exactly. And, yeah, so they'd be like, oh, yeah, see the film, read the book yeah. type thing. Um, Number 10, uh, The Demon Thief by Darren Chan. I actually met Darren Chan. You met? Oh, I have a mate. very bizarre story. Go on, this, go on. Do you want to know it first? Or yeah, yeah, let's, let's hear that. I did a, a school, he came to our school when I was much Oh, he's Irish, isn't he? Yeah, he is, is yeah. yeah. Is he from and, uh, Belfast? I think he's from the north, but I couldn't tell you where from. No, 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 from. Uh, I, I have no idea, I'm not going to lie to you. He's um, not from Carida. No. Which no, is actually like pronounced Cardiff. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, yeah, carry um, on. But anyway, yeah, he came to our school and it was like, uh, a friend of my brother's actually was saying, oh, you know, it's a free day off, essentially, you don't have to be yeah. in class all day. So I was like, hey, well, why not? I think like, I've half read all his books briefly, but why not? I was like 13. Was so it was this like, one? Nah, no, no, I don't know. Uh, but I was like, hey, whatever. And he was, it was actually, it wasn't bad, but he sat and talked, but it was a bit like, you know, no, he sort of took questions very early, as in from the start, it was like, I want audience participation. It was like, everyone here is like 13, don't have any good questions, except like, how do you become a writer? What? How do I become famous? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not actual like people can't think about that no. stuff at that age, uh, and no one's gonna turn and be like, "That's you, a good you, point." Actually, your early your intro for your fourth book reminds me of no. Yeah, no. it's like I was reading Bernard Shaw. Like, yeah, I have exactly. To say, there yeah. some strong parallels. Yeah, I want. Why do they do these things for the kids? Yeah, exactly. Funny, no one like, cares. I I mean, like I know the kids are like woohoo, but like what. He must get bored of you in the same few questions. Also, the only, More than the only thing that's really happened is that I have this story from it. It yeah. hasn't really inspired me. Which, I, which I'm interested in. Uh, but he bought, the guy, uh, I wouldn't name him, but my brother's friend bought a few books from eBay. 
Yeah. And he handed them out to us because he could get one book signed each. Yeah. And we all got them signed. Uh, and he was asking us to sign. It was like, oh, what's your name? It was like, uh, you know, happy eBay seller. So he took in all the books afterwards. Like, pleasure doing business with you, boy. So they sold all the signed books online for like higher price. Oh! <laughs> but he bought like a, a set of books. The eBay server, server, And then it. he like, yeah, and then he took, like got them all signed by like one of us all brought a book up each. What got a it signed, and then he signed them individually for like a tenner each. Oh yeah, I bought one of his books on eBay and I had a squiggle, <laughs> a squiggle on the front of it. Yeah. <laughs> <Fair>. <laughs> um, no, I said so. It was Dark Child signed. That's so it yeah, it is him. Yeah, but, um, that is an amazing yeah, story. That's better, better, story, better than the plot of the book. <laughs> So if he's less than he hates us a little bit, but that's okay. Darren Chan yeah. or the eBay seller? Maybe both. Right, I mean, well, that'd be happy. Are you in side. touch with the eBay seller? No, like, no, oh, no. Well, we may as well name and shame. Yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. I'm joking. Yeah. But anyway, the plot of The Demon Thief is essentially there's this young lad who's um he's got this weird phenomenon in his mind where he sees lights and he, okay. he's wondering why. You eventually find out that's portals to another world. That's right, like a okay. mid, that's like a midway point. point out all of Dark Shard's books are like this. Uh, yeah, they are. They are this is this is the second in a series, but it works on its own. Is it are they all well. series or are they? There's the Cirque de Freak, and then there's the Demon Arda, and this is part of the Demon Arda series. Oh, okay. But like okay. the entire I series, all series as well. I, thought I think most of them are. Fair. But like the entire series doesn't get a pass because I haven't read them all, but. This is the first one I read, and it doesn't matter what order you read them in, because no. this is standalone to the first book. A bit for now, then it gets, it gets oh, okay. everything this character from this later is, on. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, in this one, his brother is kidnapped by a demon, and then the entire book is about him getting him back, and meeting up with the disciples who are a group of demon hunters yeah. in this other realm. And, you know, they're all really fleshed out. They're not all perfect. He's not perfect himself. There's... It's such a wide variety of characters. It's such a wide variety of genres. It's got sci-fi. It's all, obviously it's got horror first yeah. and foremost. It's an adventure story. It's a it's a fish out of water story as well, which I suppose all books are in a way of some sort. Uh, all of these sort of types are, I think. Of they? These sort of like types, someone yeah. stumbles upon you're the chosen one. It's one of those. Isn't really? So basically, that the main plot trying to return his baby brother. Pretty simple. But the plot twist at the end, which I won't spoil, one of the most powerful to this day. And even the title itself is a twist. Like, that's, I mean, that's impressive. Fair, right? okay. Like, yeah. it's got it, like, it's really bizarre because my entire knowledge of him is like, oh, this guy from home writes, like, meet him. And I, I have no other interaction with him. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah. surreal that, like, oh, okay, yeah. Um, I didn't really think that other people read his books. Oh, no, I, I really love this book. You know, when you lot. find, like, things from home, and you don't know yeah. what people do it. Other, like, is this song famous? Is this film famous because it's from home? Yeah. Or is it famous overseas? Yeah. Some bits are unnecessarily gruesome, I think, and they, they're written too simply to pull off being gruesome, but the rest of it, the story is sublime. Fair. The characters, well, on point. They're fan dabby They're not amazing. You wouldn't. Because if I say they're amazing, people are going to go, all oh, these characters are really generic because he says everything's amazing. So, they, so they are just fan dabby yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um Yeah. I'm, I'm being flanderized. Yeah. I'm slipping into flanderization. Yeah. That's depressing as that is. Like. <laughs> We've gone from someone who seems to like a few things and occasionally says things are amazing to literally not saying anything else you apart can't, from you can't amazing. Hate. Yeah. Um, but if I'm acknowledging the principle of slanderization, that means I'm developing as a character. So uh, I can never be trying to be slanderized. Yeah. Uh, but what about, to try to segue back. Off no, to, to Darren Chan, uh, right? Yeah, so is it readable now? And it was like, I think, or is it too kiddie? Well, not kiddie, but like teeny. Mm, I think 100% still readable really? now. Yeah. Because I'm, I'm like I'm at reimagining scenes now and like there are bits that are funny and I still think they'd be funny now. It's light reading, I think. Yeah, it is light reading. It'd be very light for me to read, but... There's nothing wrong but with it that. wasn't then. That's no. the thing. It really wasn't. It's a then. good. It's, they're probably good books, and there's a few like that which are uh, good for like getting into. Yeah. As like getting into books properly. Because there's another thing about reading. Like, well, it's kind of what J.K. Rowling was doing, which is like the first Harry Potter book's quite all right. So then by the time you get to like the third or fourth, you're developing as a reader. Oh, this one is almost from that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, yeah, so it's a good book to like yeah. if you really want to start, sp- you know, spending hours reading. Like it's useless. really absorbing. It's one of the most yeah. immersive. And it's not an audio book, so no. can't, to my knowledge, could be. There is an audio book. Oh, is that cheese? Yeah, read by Rupert Degas. I remember Rupert Degas. I don't know. I just know Why? that he read the audio book. Right, fair, <laughs> fair. Shout out to Robert to Rupert Degas. Rupert Degas, fan. Yeah, boy. 
he could well be for all I know. Yeah. Darren Shan is no longer our biggest fan because he just said that anecdote now. He was listening to this and he was like, oh, I'll turn it I, know, I flipped. Because that's the one of the flipper that he made by yeah. himself, yeah. Well, it wasn't me. It I, wasn't you. It wasn't I was just you. a passive. You were just a pawn. Yeah. yeah. In a, in a there's there's a chess game. game at the end of this book as well. Oh, yes. Yeah, there we Perfect are. Good circle. segue. And uh, it's a really... It's, it's such an unconventional chess game. Like, you know, Alice in Wonderland plays with playing cards. Yeah. This yeah. plays with chess in the same way that they're gnawing your face about it. It's Fair. really subtle. And, yeah, well, not, the entire book's not subtle, but that particular scene. I was going to say, it's like, God, like, God, 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 God